I'm Pio. This is Nifty Culture, and I have the pleasure of sitting here with the founder of Art X Code, Sophia Garcia. How's it going, Sophia? Great, great. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, our pleasure, and we're really happy to have you. Uh, so I wanted to give people context and just give people an idea right off the bat of you know exactly what Art X Code is and what you guys are you know pushing to accomplish down there in Miami. Yeah, for sure. So Artist Code really started off as a resource center more than anything, just a just a place to, to highlight generative art and really give give artists a platform. Uh, it's kind of evolved since then to be more of uh, working more as like a gallery, uh, putting on shows, primary sales, trying to, to get up and coming artists out there, get their names out there, get them connected to, co to collectors and really just kind of start to do a little bit more storytelling around this this art form that I think for a really long time um, hasn't been kind of just, the, the attention hasn't been there, but I think now over the last year and a half, we've seen a really, really big increase in, in not only attention, but appreciation. And I, I couldn't be happier. Ooh. Of course. You're good. No <laughs> worries. No worries. So, so let me let me stop you there for one second. You you mentioned generative art. So yes. can you explain to the audience exactly what generative art is? Yeah, of course. So generative art, I I genuinely generally like to refer to it as algorithmic artwork, uh, but it's this idea of using code to create art, creating a system uh, that will generate outputs, and those outputs being the, the final artwork. Um, so it, yeah, just really, if someone is coding their artwork, creating some sort of system to generate it, uh, I'm interested. Okay, cool. And so just for people that aren't familiar, right, is this like AI based artwork? Is it machine learning? Or is it just, you know, a software program that an artist would the artist write it? Like, could you kind of, you know, give a little bit more context there? Yeah, definitely. So um, under the umbrella, there's a few different, I guess, generative art being kind of the umbrella term. Uh, I have worked with AI artists in, in the past, so artists who, who train neural networks on their own data sets. Uh, there's definitely coding involved with that, uh, but you know, AI is a bit of a, a black box for the most part, and so you're, you're constantly trying to work with it, trying to make sure that you're getting the outputs that you want. So that is one uh, section of it, but I wouldn't say that that is like the you know, generative art. In general, I work with artists who are coding up like, you know, uh, let's say in, in JavaScript and in, in processing, uh, they are, or even React, I've seen artists who, who create, you know, full on systems uh, using uh, the JavaScript framework React. Um, and really, again, just creating these really complex systems to, to create some sometimes really organic looking artwork. Sometimes it looks like someone, someone painted it, someone, uh, you know, hand drew it. And, and that's what, those are the art pieces that I really tend to, to gravitate towards. Some that make you really question like, how did you how did you do this how 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 are you able to accomplish that and i think for some context like i have been working as a developer for you know the last few years of my life um you know it's it's something that i i did professionally for a, for a while before um, while while i was even starting artix code and so uh, it's something I, I i genuinely appreciate and you know i'm always just looking for that how did you do that moment that's it's really big for me yeah, that sounds awesome. And, you know, we're going to talk more about Artex Code and, and your mm -hmm. involvement and, you know, as a founder and everything, you know, just one kind of follow up on the generative art. So it, does does the artist need to have like a technical background or is this something where an artist could collaborate with a software engineer to do it? That's kind of my first question. Mm -hmm. And then the other you know, question that I have is how much control over the output is there from the creator, like whoever's writing the code or whoever's mm -hmm. creatively in charge of the code, how much control is there on what gets kind of set on the other side? So um, your first question being if, if, you know, someone could collaborate with another artist, you know, how much technical background is necessary? Um, for the most part, all artists that I work with uh, do have technical backgrounds. Most of them are engineers uh, by trade, and you know, got into uh, you know the creative side of it. Um, at the other end of it, you know, there are people who start off in the art space and then pick up the code, like you know, uh, processing specifically. So if you're an artist and you've never coded, or if you're terrified of 
you know, this idea of, you know, these like cryptic messages in computer science, what is that processing makes it really, really easy for um, artists to kind of just like pick it up and get shapes on the screen, get them colored. Um, so, you know, in, in the, I tend to work with uh, just one artist, uh, but that's not to say an artist and a, like a traditional artist and a generative artist or an engineer couldn't come together and, and create something really amazing. And I'm sure there are plenty of, of um, partners out there who, who have done something like that. Um, and then your second question was... Um, how much control does the creator control? have? Yeah. Okay, so this one is, is interesting because for the most part, um, you know, you most of these systems you would you can kind of like refresh and start generating and start generating and kind of like play around with uh, and like kind of just like see what's coming from there and then you can kind of start to, to edit from from there to see if it's really what you want so a lot of the artists that I work with their their algorithms actually take them like they can take upwards of like a few years of uh, to really like hone down exactly what they want but um, you know I've worked with an artist in the past uh, Dimitri Cherniak where he uses some really cool tools while he's um, like while he's building it and like he can have kind of like an interface when we're testing it because these artworks actually are generated in the browser. Uh, we can be in the browser, see the artwork and play around uh, with the variables uh, like the, the um, uh, yeah, like play, play around with those inputs uh, and see kind of like what what parameter here do we want to change? Like maybe we'll want to add, uh, you know, like change some of like the randomization of the numbers. And I've sat there for, with him like before a show for hours, just trying to 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 tweak things around and try to get that that composition that we really want. And we'll we'll kind of go through them. We'll we'll save them, and we'll finally decide like, okay, this is the one that we're going to showcase at the show. Now we're seeing. Uh, the rise of marketplaces like Artblocks, which I'm a huge fan of. I sit on their curation board and they work with generative artists. And what they do, which is really, really cool, is they actually have the artists upload, uh, you know, their their program and then they invoke it like, you know, somewhere between like 500 and 1000 times. And so the system itself needs to be strong enough to create 500 pieces or 1000 pieces that people are willing to by and we're seeing that these these artists that are coming in here and going to the curated side um you know are selling out thousands of pieces in like 15 10 10 minutes 15 minutes and people are just so excited to to have a part of that because another part of it is when you're actually um trying to when you purchase it that transaction that hash is a variable in the artwork so your the action of you invoking the the program actually influences the out the final output that becomes your your piece. So it, it's it's really incredible to see, and I feel like you know NFTs and um, you know this entire system has actually become like the perfect place for generative art to really thrive. Whereas before it was a very kind of manual process. I would have to kind of sit there. We would we would collaborate, try to find that perfect piece, and then when the collector bought a print, which is now like an emulation of it, uh, it's not, you know, the actual code, uh, you know, I would give them printouts of, of the code output so that the, connect, the collector could kind of connect with the fact that this was generated with code. And so now the, the outputs are, that code is stored on chain and it's amazing. Like you actually get the, the guts of, of the code, whereas before we didn't really have that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really is amazing. And, you know, it's way over my head. Let me go on record and say that <laughs> I am not a software engineer. It is over my head. Um, but the output is obviously beautiful and really mm -hmm. just fascinating to me that, you know, the kind of human and machine collaboration can yeah. yield, you know, artwork that wouldn't otherwise be able to be created. Um, and when you and I met in Miami, you had talked mm -hmm. about when you first heard about NFTs mm -hmm. and, you know, like, what what your initial thoughts were it's i think at first you said that you were kind of like what's up with this and then you know as you kind of saw the power of of the medium um you know and how it related to the artwork that you know you were already years deep into mm -hmm. right you were already yeah. deeply involved with generative art can you talk about like you know that transition from pre nft to post nft you know with any of the artists that you've worked with or, or any of the kind of shows that you've put on oh definitely so uh you know when they first 
heard about you know the crypto I, I remember going to a lot of like art and blockchain events in in new york while i was there and you know it's seeing about like the rare pepes and all that stuff and being just like cool okay like that's interesting but not fully understanding and i did our first show um was in may of 2019 and you know we had pieces available and OpenSea was actually sponsoring the the fair that we were at uh the the they actually changed it. Kadaf. They used to be the Contemporary and Digital Art Fair. Now they're the Crypto and Digital Art Fair, right, rightly so. Um, and so, you know, I had this one piece uh, by Dmitry Cherniak that, you know, was probably like the pricier of all of them. And it was like, we're getting close to like the last day and we haven't sold it yet. And someone's like, well, why don't you list it on, on OpenSea? Like tokenize it. And I was like, what? It's like, I'm seeing all of these like, like collectibles on here. I'm seeing the kitties and I'm seeing, you know, like monsters. And I'm like, this is a, like, this is a fine art piece. Like, you know, that's how I was seeing it. I was like, this is a fine art piece. I don't want to put it up there, but uh, you know, I was kind of being a brat about it. I'm not going to lie. And, <laughs> and I was like, well, you know what? The artist gave me the okay. We're like, let's just fine. We'll, we're going to test it out. And so we did it. And uh, at that point, I was really looking at it as more of a, a certificate of authentication. That was kind of how we how we saw it. We're like, this can be the, the certificate of authentication. If someone buys this, you know, they own a piece. All of a sudden, there's a collector that comes out and he's like, hey, I want it, but I only want the digital asset. I only want the NFT. I don't want the physical piece. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, this is like a printed on like the finest, like museum grade, like like paper and museum glass. Like it was like, you know, we went above and beyond for production and um, no, you need to have both. And he was just like, all right, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll get both. Um, so I, I met with the collector in person and I, and I brought him the piece and I was like, hey, like, why did you only want the digital asset? Like, what is, what is, what's up with that? And uh, he ended up being, uh, having his own like crypto hedge fund. So he was really deep into the space. And all of a sudden he opens up his computer, shows me his gallery and crypto voxels uh, and that he made and every single artwork in there was an NFT. And I was stunned. I was like, oh, I definitely have like the video. I'm like, cause I was like, hold up. I need to videotape this, you know? Like, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it, it really opened my eyes to how people were, were starting to look at it. So. Uh, throughout 2019, we continue to experiment with this idea of NFTs, but as certificate of authentication for physical pieces. We weren't really seeing the utility of a digital only artwork just yet. You know, uh, it wasn't until 2020 that obviously everything was canceled. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were going to do an art show with this artist. Uh, what we did. Uh, uh, an exhibition with this artist, uh, Harshi Agrawal, and he's an amazing AI artist based in India. And, you know, we had these beautiful pieces of his, uh, he, he did them with, with AI. And uh, he also had this, like, there's a collaborate, actually, this is a perfect example. He, he did an AI piece where he collaborated with a painter and the painter would paint over, uh, you know, the, the pieces that he generated because they were landscapes and, and stuff like that, but would keep the parts that were really pixelated uh, just so you can kind of see the juxtaposition and, and understand that this was actually created by uh, AI. Uh, but long story short, the fair that we were doing this at was canceled and they put it online into a digital art fair. And, you know, the user experience was not so good. Our, our booth was like, you know, back of the page, like somewhere hidden and we, and it was a complete bust for us. We didn't sell anything. And like, I was not used to that. I was not okay with that. Like, What's going on? Um, so I was talking with the artist and we were like, okay, what are we going to do here? why don't we try, uh, you know, listing your work on super rare? Like, let's see what happens. You know, let's see if, if, if anyone's into it. And every single piece sold for more than we had listed the, the physical pieces for. And that blew my mind. I was like, oh my God. So like, you know, these are people here that are willing to spend $800 on a piece instead of the $400 that we had listed, uh, you know, cause yeah, like, and, 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 it just it, it just blew my mind, and then from there I was like, all right, like let's let's do it. People see it, I see it, all right. And so from there we we started to do more shows, um, and it was and it's been amazing ever since, you know. And, and it's really helped us also just like move move quickly, where it's like okay, beforehand I would need to put down you know 
a ton of money to get all the production stuff ready, like getting the prints ready, getting like, and like working with, you know, again, we're working with the best of the best quality because I wouldn't do that to an artist. I wouldn't put their work on anything other than that. Um, so, and getting them frames, getting a space to put them up in, uh, you know, all of these things. And now it's like, all right, you transfer me the asset. <laughs> <laughs> I will pay your gas fees. <laughs> like transfer me here, like mint it, transfer it to me, and now we're gonna put on a show. And like I will do all the marketing associated with that. I will get in contact with all my collectors, um, you know, and just get people excited. And and that 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 worked, you know. That that's and that's been working for us, and it's been really really fun uh, to kind of see this this transition from you know people being only interested in physical art to now this kind of mass adoption of this really big paradigm shift in how you think about ownership, especially for artwork and digital artwork, especially because we're so used to this idea of like copy paste, the right click save, like how, what does this mean? But now more and more people are starting to understand like why this idea of kind of like the digital original is, is valid because of blockchain and because of the blockchain and because of NFT specifically, the, the, that token standard has, has, you know, changed the game. So um, it's, it's been really, really cool to see, especially over the last year and especially 2020, like, you know, we couldn't go out to, to physical gallery shows anymore, but everyone's meeting up in crypto voxels to see uh, an art opening and like, you know, place a bid on an artwork because that's what we could do, you know, <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it's really exciting. And I think now, um, It'll be it'll be really cool to see how we continue to to take that experience, but bring it into the real world and and really you know honor both the digital and the physical together and see that we can actually like interact with it in in real life. Yeah, for sure. And and you know I like what you said there at the end because right now most NFTs and NFT galleries and everything they only exist in the digital world in the mm -hmm. sense that you can pull it up on your phone, you can pull it up on a laptop. Um, but you know when I uh, spoke with Mark who introduced us, mm -hmm. Mark uh, Billings from the CEO of Black Dove, which is an NFT physical display company, we really talked about you know the idea that once people are seeing physically displayed NFTs in galleries, in people's homes. I think that'll be kind of the final kick that leads to them really understanding exactly what the, the deal is kind of with NFTs. Just like you had that aha moment when a buyer was effectively refusing the physical, which I can only imagine. Yeah, that must have just melted your brain. And uh, and, and that's so funny that you said like, the, you had to ask him like, why didn't you want the physical? Like it just made no sense to you at that time. And it wouldn't have made sense to me at that time too. So. Yeah, I mean, the whole world is fascinating. I think that what you're doing is so cool with the specific type of art that is just so perfect for NFTs, like NFT technology. Mm -hmm. I guess before NFTs, was it It was just a digital um, like you know, image on Instagram or something, and then you'd make a print and sell a print? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So um, usually I was, at that moment, I was just like always scouring Instagram and <laughs> trying to find, I'm like, who else is out here like making generative art? Because I, I love, you know, I really liked it, but I, because I was coding during the day, like I was someone who got into coding, like more out of a necessity than like, you know, this need to code all the time. Um, I was in the art space, but I, I, and I was teaching generative art. I was teaching creative coding here in Miami at a nonprofit, um, creating curriculums, doing all of these things. But I was like, who are these people who like, have to create generative art like where are these people that are just like in their bones like they are just pumping out work because they love it and so i was out there just like trying to find them and then like who is there like pushing the envelope and like what it means to to make artwork with code and so like you know it's 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 just been like this like journey just like finding the people like who like who is it going to be like who, like what is, what is it that you're doing and like now now it's just like become this um you know crazy journey over the last few years because I think what it's been probably since like 2016 that I've been kind of like playing around with this 2019 being the first time I even like looked at an NFT but you know before it was just like who's doing it like what's this video like what's this still here like what's this video like I, I one of my favorite pieces um, you know ever came from a video a, a WebGL um, like video like shader that he did in the browser and again went to the studio we were sitting there 
like trying to figure out like how are we going to like what's that perfect like moment that we we can you know do it because I really want it in the beginning I stayed away from the idea of like having digital frames and having digital modes of 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 transferring this this art piece to the collector because I was trying to get more people to look at it as just artwork and not really think about like the fact that it was created with code was like a, a second thought when you see it anyway you're just like wow that's a beautiful piece and you're like oh someone wrote it someone wrote javascript to create that like they didn't draw it you know and so that's the way that i was i was viewing it i think we i had mentioned this to you before but um you know one of the best compliments i ever had was being at the contemporary and digital art fair everything there was digital and someone coming into my booth and being like why is this artwork here? Like, what's digital about it? Because I had sculptures, I had, you know, all these pieces that look like they were like spray painted or, or like watercolors or, or, you know, hand drawn. And uh, yeah, I had to let them know everything here was generated with code. Everything here was generated with code. And, you know, that's, that's been like kind of like the funnest uh, thing to, to see. Um, just like, you know, people's, people's reactions to it. But um, I think I went off a little bit of a tangent there, but it's still all related to how we how we display it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And no, that's amazing. Someone came up to you and was like, you know, wh wh why are you bringing this art here? This is a digital art fair. And it's yeah. like everything you're seeing is digital. So that's so cool. Um, okay, so what can people expect from Artex Code? Like, you know, are there any events coming up or, you know, for this year, next year? Like, what are, what are you kind of thinking? What's the vision for Artex Code for the immediate future? Oh, so I'm I'm really excited for uh, for the future. I'm working on uh, something really fun. I want to say everything, but I'm just gonna try to keep it somewhat uh, secretive for the time being. Mm -hmm. uh, so follow Artex Code on uh, Instagram and Twitter, so I can kind of give you some more updates. But we're planning an event in uh, December. Uh, usually, we have Art Basel here during uh, the first week of December, and the the entire city goes crazy with a bunch of different art shows. So uh, I am planning a, a, a big one. Um, it's going to be very, 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 very fun. And I think it's going to be, uh, it, it's really gonna bring out like the quality side of, of the NFT space and really bringing out the best of the best. So uh, keep an eye out, uh, I'll leave it at that. But I think it's gonna be a, a really, really fun uh, event. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you guys heard directly from Sophia. Make sure you follow Artex Code on Instagram and Twitter. We'll make sure that we post the links in the description. Sophia, thank you so much. And uh, we can't wait to continue to cover what Artex Code does with generative art. Thank you. Thank you. No, this is amazing. Thank you so much.